Namaste, Prakash here. Welcome to the next edition of uh, Dharma Tales. Let's discuss. Mahabharat keeps to be the reference point for many of the Dharmic values that we would like to learn. And today the story that I have chosen is uh, again that from the life of uh, Bhishma. The war is going on and uh, Pandavas are not able to make much of breakthroughs. And they know for sure that uh, till Bhishma, the Pitamaha, is uh, fell down, they are not going to be in a position to really go towards winning the war. And as the final uh, strategy based on Lord uh, Krishna's uh, advice, they put Shikandi in the war between uh, Arjun and uh, Bhishma. There is a story in the past life of uh, Shikandi in the form of Amba and Ambalika. When apparently when he was a woman in the previous life, he had been deeply hurt by what uh, Bhishma had uh, done to her in that life. And she dies with the woe that she will come back and take revenge. And that is precisely what happens when she gets born again as Shikandi. When Shikandi is put in front, Bhishma obviously knows for sure that he will not be able to send even one arrow because when he sees Shikandi, he does not see the current life of Shikandi, but he only sees the past life where, uh, in her view at least, uh, Bhishma had done some injustice. So he is standing in front and then Arjun keeps on shooting all those arrows where Bhishma is not able to defend himself because he is hiding behind Shikandi and shooting all those arrows. And finally when Bhishma falls, it is a bed of arrows and uh, all of them congregate and at some point of time when Bhishma actually decides he has the bone to die at the time of his choice. He picks about 58 days into the future, which is when the Dakshinayan will end and Uttrayan will start. And he wants to die by the time. During the time, he actually is introspecting and finding out, in spite of him being such uh, on a straightforward person throughout his life, why he has to go through so much of suffering with so many arrows piercing through him, thousands of them as they say, at the deathbed. He is not able to find his answer. Though he understands the way in which dharma and karma work together, he goes back about 72 lives into his past and is not able to find the reason why or what he has done in this 72 lives for him to go through this. He is not able to go beyond that. And then he calls for the help from Lord Krishna himself. Lord Krishna comes and says, uh, Bhishma, you are only blessed to see up to 72 lives. And then he shows him what has happened in one of the lives prior to that, the 73rd life or so. In that, uh, Bhishma, being whatever he was in that uh, birth, was going in his chariot, in uh, hunting down or in fighting or something. There is an insect which keeps actually bothering him. And with one uh, swat, he gets that insect thrown out of his uh, way. And while he does it, the insect goes and falls into a bush of thorns. And its body apparently is pierced almost like with about thousand thorns or so. And that karma that he had created in that life had light dormant. So people asked, or rather people asked uh, Lord Krishna as to why it had to wait for 72 lives for it to unfold. And then Lord Krishna gives two secrets as one of the version of Mahabharata story. He says one, in the next 72 lives, Bhishma lived such a pious life or full of values to such an extent that there was no way in which this karma could unfold as bog. And in this life it had to happen. And then he is again asked the question, why in this life? And then he says that in this life he had kept quiet in many of the sufferings that Pandavas had gone through. Specifically the one in which Draupadi was put through 
all that uh, disrespect she had to go through in the uh, kingdom and whenever that incident happened when she had to be disrobed by Kauravas and all that, he kept quiet and that actually triggered the unfolding of that karma and he went through that in this life. It's a very fascinating story indeed where there is an intertwine that we see not just between the values that we hold but between what we have done and how karma and dharma actually come together to wreak havoc or to unfold and create the bow with which people have to go through the karma. So the real question to us in this story is what exactly is the connection between karma and dharma? Would our karmic equations change the way we look at dharma? Would a simple woe that uh, Bhishma made of protecting the clan of Kauravas stop him from being straightforward when he had to, when Pandavas were actually being meted out whatever they were by the Kauravas. There are many such Dharmi questions which actually come up in this uh, story. It is for us now to analyze, to find as a potential uh, ruler of a nation, as a potential head of an organization, as a head of a family, as a family member, what are the dharmic equations, what are the dharmic values that this story actually teaches us? Why did Bhishma have to be felt the way he felt, though Lord Krishna himself had explained what he had done so did like prior to that? What do we really learn? When do we allow the karma to interfere in dharma? And when do we ensure that the karma actually unfolds in such a way that dharma can be made to be upheld which is what is essential for upholding of the universe. There is so much to debate, there is so much to learn. Please pick up whatever video channel you are watching it. Go to the comment section. Start sharing your views on what are the dharmic equations that we can learn. There are multiple dharmic equations that we can learn from this. Once we do that, let's also connect to see what does it teach for us to learn so that we also do not make the same mistakes what the people involved in this story have made. Whether it is Bhishma, whether it is Shikandi, whether it is Arjun, or whether any of those Pandavas who actually got entangled in this. What do we learn? How do we ensure that Dharma can be upheld, however virtuous you are in your life? Let's debate Dharma tales. Till we meet again, this is Prakash signing off. Thank you.